This video is going to be about quantiles. Uh, I think the toughest thing about quantiles is that they have so many nicknames. Quantiles are also called percentiles by some people. And later on, when we get down to some specific named quantiles, we're going to hear an even another word for these things, which goes by the name core tiles. So replace the N with an R. But I think once we get to the point of a picture and maybe the integral, we should have a good idea of what's going on. And we should have a quick example that we can always kind of fall back to. So we'll start with a quick example. Then we'll show what that looks like in a picture. Then we'll write it out in integral notation uh, as if this were like a Calc 2 course. By the time we get to a definition, which is going to show up as an expectation, we should have multiple ways to reference the idea. Uh, so the definition, although it's um, obnoxiously short, it shouldn't be too bad for us. We'll talk about some other named quantiles, and then we'll look at an example in R. So let's get started, because there's a lot of bullet points there. Um, we're going to start with a quick example. Suppose you have a child. And your child weighed seven pounds and 11 ounces at birth. If your child's weight is greater than let's say 67% of all other children's birth weight, then we say your child is in the 67th percent. Uh, well, we say quantile or percentile. And uh, I defaulted to percentile because in the medical world, percentile is more common. The only real reason we're going to stick to quantile, where that is an N, and I'll just make that more clear, is because that's the name of the function in R, is quantile. So the takeaway here is that there is some weight that defines the point with which all other children are less than your weight. That is, uh, your child's weight is greater than some 67% of all other children's weight. So the way we write this out is we call this number itself Q sub 67. And we'll just write it as a decimal for consistency. So there is some number that puts all other numbers relative to whatever the context is, in this case, children's weight, below that number. OK, so let's see this as a picture. So we might think of this on a normal density, because I can draw those the best. Oh, except that one's not great. That's OK supposed to be perfectly symmetric, but it's clearly not. So we might say 7 pounds and 11 ounces is here, and this is equal to Q.67. So this is the number that puts 67% of the area under the density function less than it. So this is where all other children whose birth weight is less than some amount live. All other children's birth weights is less than the number that defines the 67th quantile. OK, quantiles, percentiles, always define a number, which we will reference like this, for whatever percentage it is less than that number of interest. OK, so you can imagine then, as an integral, 
we're essentially integrating some density function up to the point of interest, and now let's start generalizing it a little bit, we'll call it Q sub P, where the integral is equal to that decimal. So like, imagine this is 0.67 equal to the integral from somewhere I haven't yet specified up to the point Q.67. And keep in mind that this is like seven pounds, 11 ounces, according to our example. The only reason I've left this uh, lower bound out of the notation so far is because they often write negative infinity, which works in the case of the normal density function whose lower bound of the sample space is off towards negative infinity. But what they actually mean is pick out the lower bound of the support for whatever the density is that you're looking at. So here is another picture representing a gamma distribution where zero is the lower bound of the support of the density function. And so that in that case, you'd actually replace this negative infinity with zero. But they mean to suggest that you just trust that your density function is only defined on positive numbers. So you can think of it as this integral from negative infinity up to zero has zero area under the density or you can just say, start the lower bound at zero. Either way, it'll get you to the same place. And the same general idea holds. There is some number that puts 100 times P percent less than the quantile of interest. Okay, so we've seen this in a picture, we've seen it in integral, and we've seen it in a quick example. Let's just try a formal definition. the 100 times P quantile, which we denote Q subscript P, is the solution to the following equation. The equation looks like this. We have P, that like 0.67, as it was in our quick example, uh, is equal to the expectation of the indicator function from negative infinity up to the point Q sub P. And so really this equation must hold for some specified probability, like 0.67, and you solve the expectation, you solve the integral problem for this value Q sub P. But it turns out what we're really doing is just taking an expectation of area under the density function with respect to the function, the indicator function, up to the number we are interested in. So hopefully, even if this isn't the most obvious of definitions, referencing the picture, the integral, and the quick example will help us make more meaning out of this. Okay, so let's look at some named quantiles. Q sub 0.25 is also called the first, okay, this is obnoxious, quartile, but I got to spell quartile right. Okay, quart in English is like quarter. And look, this is just like a quarter's worth, right? And then we have Q sub 0.5 is the second quartile. Or the median. <laughs> the median. So Q.5 then is essentially the number that puts exactly half of the area under the density function to the left of the number of interest. 
then you might be able to guess at this point there is the third quartile. So we're now going to see if we can um, do another example, but inside R. So if we go over into R, I'm going to load this droughts data set, which you can either go get the URL from my website, as I've shown you in previous videos, or you can just copy this down. Um, I hope you can go to the website. It's much faster, but if you can't, you can pause here. So to calculate the uh, quantile from, let's say, a gamma distribution, just to make my example fun. You start with Q, because we're looking for a quantile, and then you type the name of the distribution. So there's this sort of function for most named distributions in R. I'm going to, just for fun, start with the 75th quantile, or the third quartile. And I'm going to pick shape equal to A, and I've actually chosen these values A and uh, rate equal to B. So let me just show you these values, A and B. I'm not telling you why I've chosen these numbers. I'm just picking these numbers kind of randomly. And now let's emphasize with those um, values, shape and rate, the 75th quantile or the third quartile from this specific gamma distribution is equal to 2.6. So the number 2.6 is the number that puts 75% of the area under the density function, this particular density function, to the left of the number 2.6. The 75th quantile from this particular gamma distribution is equal to 2.6. From the point 2.6, to the left, less than 75% of the area under the density function lives. Now you can change 0.75 all you want in this example and play around with shape and rate as you will. What I'm going to do is try to connect this example to our droughts data set. So if we just pull up the plot of the density function based on the data alone, we get a plot that looks a lot like this. And now the question is, can we estimate this quantile using only data? And the answer is absolutely. You go to a function named quantile, you type in the vector that contains your data of interest, and you say you're interested in the 75th quantile or the third quartile. And you can see what's happening is this 2.5, somewhere like right about here, is saying from this point, all the area under this density function to the left is about 75% of the area. Now what's actually happening is this is the data side of the world that is using only the data stored in this vector to estimate this expectation. So theoretically, if we collected more and more and more and more data from this airport in somewhere in Canada, I forget off the top of my head right now, then this 2.5 would get closer and closer and closer and closer as our data set increased to this number. It would converge to this quantile. So hopefully this is a good introduction to quantiles and how we can connect it to the data side that we've been slowly introducing more and more into our world of statistics.